This is Tushar Bot. I don't know what that means. He's a he's a zero follower Andy though, so you know he's doing his best to get some uh, clout from Nerd Roddick. Uh, Nerd Roddick says, "Just watch the first episode of Hawkeye or er, the Kate Bishop show." Well, Krusty, Kate Bishop is also called Hawkeye. That is her name in the comics. It always has been since she became a character. Actually, Clint Barton was dead in the comics whenever she arrived on the scene. So there wasn't any, you know, it's actually she just took up the mantle in his honor. And then, of course, as superheroes often do, he eventually came back and uh, Clint Barton did. And, you know, then the same thing with like Wolverine and Laura Kinney. Now they're both Wolverine. And it's like Hawkeye's just like, yeah, you be Hawkeye, too. We're both Hawkeye. It's not a big deal. Lots of people have the same names. Yeah, Hawkeye's about Hawkeye. Can you fucking imagine that, Krusty? I'm not going to learn his real name. I'm just going to call him Krusty. Uh, Jeremy Griggs is Sandy. This guy's Krusty. I'm going to I'm gonna come up with like my own, you know, uh, character sheet for all these guys. Yep, Young Avengers number one was the first appearance of uh, Kate Bishop. And yeah, absolutely. Haley Steinfeld was great. I did a review for Hawkeye on my other channel, Crack a Boom. Um, if you guys haven't seen that, you can check it out. I'll give you a link real quick. Please go and subscribe to that channel that I just linked in the in the description. I mean, in the chat there. Uh, it's it's my smaller channel. It's it's one where I just talk about the nerdy things that I love. I'm not talking about these people or you know, Krusty or Sandy or or uh, Doomcock or any of those people. I just talk about the media from a perspective of a fan, somebody who loves things and wants things to be good. That doesn't mean I'm always going to think they're good, but I do try to give everything, you know, uh, a fair shake. Oh, thank you, Zeon's Ghost. Yeah, I did a, that. we did an episode of Three Eras where me and two friends look at three different uh, stories from you know, one character or team or whatever. We did Eternals when the Eternals came out where three of us covered three different eras of Eternals comics. Uh, and then we just did Spider-Man. It was me, Blurred Without Fear and Questing Refuge covered three different eras of Spider-Man. That And all, they all relate to the plot of No Way Home. So they're like Spider-Verse, uh, you know, because that has to do with multiple Spider-Men and, and the, uh, you know, dimension hopping and stuff. And then uh, One More Day, which is universally... Uh, known for all the wrong reasons, but we, you know, Ernie Blurred Without Fear covered that anyway, like a champ. Uh, and we actually found some positives with One More Day, believe it or not. Um, but that relates to No Way Home as well, because, you know, in that he is trying to, uh, you know, do some magic shenanigans to make the world forget that he's Peter Parker, which is what happens in the film, it seems. And uh, yeah. And then this guy. Uh, said, amazing how Kate took down henchmen twice her size in a hand-to-hand -hand combat fight, and also amazing how she could track down that old dude with her phone without any explanation. Jesus, this show is going to be terrible. Point one, which is amazing how she took down henchmen twice her size. She's established in the first few minutes as being a, a multiple prize-winning martial arts champion, as she is in the comics. Uh, and even still... Even with that, she struggled to fight those henchmen in the first uh, in the first real fight she was in. She was having a hard time. She had to resort to grabbing fucking wine bottles and clocking them in the head, and she kind of barely got out of that situation. To, so to act like she just handily kicked a group of dudes' asses with no problem is dishonest. And this is just one of the types of takes that you know. I hate to call this guy out because he's got zero followers, but maybe this will give him a couple. You know, to try and frame it this way. It's like, are you even watching the show? Did you not see the part where it shows that she's she's won so many trophies and, and medals for martial arts that and, and stuff that she just doesn't even care anymore? She just like wins them and is like throws it in the corner. <laughs> like, whatever. It's just another one. Okay, so point two. Uh, amazing how she could track down that old dude with her phone without any without any explanation. Well, except the explanation that her family owns a security company and that it showed her. Uh, grab Clint's phone and call it to make sure that she had a connection to his phone so she could use whatever tracing app that she gets through her family's security business to track him. So it really is just like this dude 
wasn't watching the show or you know maybe he's got the memory of a goldfish i don't know why bro yeah i mean uh <laughs> it's probably really really uh thick wine bottles for those you know rich people and plus if you hit somebody with a bottle and it's full by the way a bottle that's full is less likely to break and those bottles were full and if you hit somebody with just like the corner of it or not the corner because it doesn't have a corner, but like the edge of the bottom of the bottle, that's not going to break, but it's going to fuck somebody up. Yeah, but Mary Sue, yeah, because they don't know how to analyze media and because they've got a lot of, you know, internal internalized, not even internalized, but just misogyny seeping out of their pores, they can't handle when a female character is, is shown in any kind of way that, it, it, if she's not a damsel in distress and she's able to handle herself, she's a Mary Sue. Yeah, and you know, I've made the argument before that uh, Ray in The Force Awakens was when we meet Ray in The Force Awakens, she's already more capable than Luke Skywalker was when we met him in A New Hope, because she was, you know, pretty much since a little since she was a little kid, has survived on her own uh, in the desert. It shows her scavenging through fucking you know uh, 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 derelict Imperial starships, and y you know surviving and it shows that she knows her how to you know fight because she had to because she's was a little girl on this planet by herself for a lot of years uh yeah and then luke when we meet him yeah he he knows how to do some shooting he knows how to uh you know i guess shoot womp rats or whatever but he's also was kind of a whiny bitch now i love luke skywalker uh he's one of the coolest characters ever in my opinion uh, he's the, the embodiment of the hero's journey, and I'm not disparaging him generally. I'm just saying that by comparison, Luke kind of had it easy up until the point that he we meet him in A New Hope. Ray was formed by adversity. Ray was forced to learn how to fend for herself. And so, yeah. But Tashi Station has power converters.